In this video, I'll explain how to set up the wireless end zone camera hardware for football. We recommend watching this video during your first time setup of the system. Your first time probably takes about 30 to 40 minutes to become familiar with everything. After that, typical setup time should only take 10 to 15 minutes. First, let's look at an overview of the components. On the ground level, you'll have the hard case with your router, antenna, and network battery. The wireless camera head will go on top of your tower and have two batteries. If you have a 30-foot tower, make sure the four locking legs are fully extended and locked. If you have the 20-foot tower, make sure that the bottom stabilizer is down, not up, and that the legs are fully extended and locked via the mast knobs. For all towers, the center mast should be resting on the ground. This is very important. If high winds are expected, you'll also want to consider using sandbags to improve stability. For windy areas, also consider lowering the tower below its maximum height. Please be advised that a particularly strong gust of wind can blow the tower over. Next, mount the head to the top of the tower by rotating the head 360 degrees around the thread. Try not to cross threads and make sure you spin the entire unit, not just the black connector at the bottom of the smart camera. Do not mount the head while it is powered on. To be safe, make sure nothing is connected to the battery. Mounting while powered on risks locking the motors and potentially breaking them when mounting. Now turn the Sony camera on and connect it to the battery. There are three types of smart camera head battery solutions. For our most up-to-date model, connect the USB extension cord from the camera's handle strap USB connector to the USB port on the battery labeled camera in white. For our cylinder battery model, turn on the cylinder battery first by pressing the small LED button, if there is one, before connecting to the camera's handle strap USB connector. The button LED light must be on before connecting to the camera with most cylinder batteries. For our single battery model, connect the USB extension cord from the handle strap USB connector to the USB port on the battery labeled camera in white, just like our modern version. This is an older style of battery, and we recommend that you upgrade to the two battery style for longer battery life and greater reliability. Note the disappearance of the battery icon in the top right corner of the camera's viewfinder. This is how you verify the camera is using external power successfully, regardless of battery type. Next, connect the HDMI cable from the camera into the port labeled Connect Camera on the left side of the head. The camera should be facing the front Velcro battery. Do not connect the camera to the HDMI out port on the right. Then, connect the motor power cable, color-coded yellow, into the motor port on your battery. The motor cord color coding is always yellow. The zoom cable should already be plugged into the Sony camera, but if for some reason it isn't, go ahead and do this next. If you encounter zoom issues while testing, unplug this cord and plug it right back in. If zoom problems persist, turn the Sony camera completely off, wait for 10 seconds, then reopen the viewfinder so that it turns back on, and then reconnect. It's very important to know that the end zone tower must use a Sony Handycam. You may also want to double check that your HDMI output resolution is set to either auto or 720p. You can check this by going to menu, setup, and scrolling down to HDMI resolution. 720p or auto will work, but 1080i or 1080p will not work. It's also a good idea to ensure that your camera's power save feature is turned off, which is also in the setup section of the menu. Connect the power cord to the router, and then plug it into the network battery. Do not connect the 15 volt charger cable from the network battery to the router. This will not provide enough power to the router, and it won't work. Conversely, never charge the network battery with the 24 volt router power cord as this will damage the network battery and void its warranty. Next, plug the Wi-Fi antenna into the router port color-coded with a black sticker. Your system will have one of two types of routers and antennas. 
You may have a black router with a white rectangular antenna. Or you may have a white router and an antenna with a pair of rabbit ears. The first antenna is directional and provides a Wi-Fi signal up to 100 feet away as long as the iPad is within the path of the antenna's beam and there are no obvious obstructions, such as metal fences or large groups of people. The second antenna, with ears, creates a bubble of Wi-Fi, which still allows you to connect from about 100 feet away, again, assuming no obvious obstructions. If you have the antenna with ears, screw the ears into the antenna and position them at a 45 degree angle. For either antenna, use the Velcro strap to attach the antenna to the tower pole. Last, plug the end of the long blue ethernet cable, the end that doesn't have a carabiner clip, to the router into the port color-coded with a blue sticker. You can now connect the other end of the long blue ethernet cable to the port on the bottom of the head. Also note that there are two black USBs next to the ethernet port that should always be plugged in. Make sure that they're plugged in securely. Now, this is extremely important. You must use strain relief on the long blue ethernet cord. It protects the ethernet port in the bottom of the head from being damaged. Failure to use strain relief properly will almost certainly result in eventual damage to the port. After this is connected, give the cable a gentle tug to make sure all of the weight is on the clip and not on the port. Now, on the network battery, flip the AC power switch to on in order to supply power to the network. You'll see the battery screen turn on and the display will show the current battery charge. For older styles of batteries, hold the power button until the green light on the outlet comes on. Make sure that the network battery and the router are inside the case and that the lid is gently closed to protect it from the elements, including direct sunlight. The cords should come out of the front of the case, but don't latch the case as this can pinch the cords. You may also need to press the button on your wireless camera's head battery to make sure that it's delivering power you should see four blue lights come on. If you have multiple batteries, make sure that they are all turned on and delivering power. The rest of the setup order isn't very important so long as you plug the blue marked computer USB power cord in last. Make sure to double check all connections before moving on. If the head is talking to the network, you'll see a flashing light in the ethernet port. Before raising the end zone tower, we recommend testing the camera's functionality to ensure that everything is working correctly. It's important to note that you'll want to make sure your iPad is compatible with the system. Use the link in the description to see our up-to-date compatibility list. The blue column identifies which iPads are capable of controlling the wireless end zone camera. Only iPads marked yes in green will work, and in general, the newer the iPad, the more responsive it will be with the system. If you're using the AI Cam Assist feature, you'll look at the purple column to see which iPads are compatible and what they're capable of. On your iPad, go to Settings and find the SportScope Wi-Fi. Connect using the password that can be found on the top of your router. If this is your first time using an iPad with the system, or your first time setting the system up, it's best to double check that the SportScope app's necessary permissions are enabled. Go to your iPad settings screen, and on the left side, scroll down to Privacy. Ensure that Location Services is turned on. Next, on the left side, scroll all the way down to the bottom and look for SportScope. Ensure that Location is set to Always, and Local Network is set to On. Note that if Location isn't allowed, the app will say No Network, and if Local Network isn't allowed on the app, it will say Not Connected. It's also important to turn Bluetooth off here in the iPad settings. Next, open up the SportScope app and go to the cameras page. The end zone camera should have a status of ready. If it says requires upgrade in orange, tap the orange upgrade button next to shut down and restart. This process will take about a minute for the upgrade status to cycle. Be patient and wait for the status to show ready. On the home page, you'll either see the most recent game or the demo game. Note that you cannot do anything from the demo game. In order to control the system, you must create a new game or use an existing created game. 
Go to Games and select New in order to start a new game. Put in your team's name as well as the opponent's name. Note that your system says End Zone, Ready, next to Select Cameras, and is highlighted in white. This indicates that the camera is ready to go and selected. If the camera accidentally gets deselected, the white background will disappear and you won't be able to proceed. Once it is selected, you can start the game. Then bring the controls up on the right hand side to start the live feed of the end zone angle. If the live feed still does not appear and that the control bar on the right side of the screen has been expanded, check the preferences menu and ensure that live feed is turned on. Once an end zone live feed is established, test its functionality by placing your fingers on the screen to ensure pan, tilt, and zoom are all working. The joystick on the right controls pan and tilt. The plus minus controller on the left controls the zoom. If the zoom isn't working, please unplug and replug the zoom cable. You can also resolve this by turning off the Sony Handycam itself and waiting for the status on the iPad screen to say camera offline in blue, then turning the camera back on. This can be done manually by closing the camera viewfinder, or you can tap on the power icon in the top right hand control panel in the app. The control bar on the right side of the home screen also has an aperture symbol that enables our cam assist feature. Feel free to give it a try, and for more information, see our cam assist instructions. Another thing to quickly check while setting up is the recording settings available by tapping on the white cog wheel on the right side of the control panel, and at the bottom, make sure that record to iPad is on and record to camera is off. This configuration is highly preferable for football, and it prevents some potential zoom errors that can occur. For filming other sports, such as soccer, your record settings will actually be reversed. Record to iPad off, record to camera on. Additionally, you can tag plays on the fly by the color-coded Offense, Defense, and Kicking using the ODK buttons below the Record and Cam Assist buttons. If using the wireless end zone camera with a third-party replay system, first connect the strain relief clip from the 30-foot HDMI cable to the Ethernet strain relief clip. This is extremely important. You must use the strain relief. It protects the HDMI port in the side of the head from being damaged. Failure to use strain relief properly will result in eventual damage to the port. A proper setup will have the carabiner clip from the HDMI cable daisy-chained to the clip from the Ethernet cable, and there will be a reasonable amount of slack from the clip's position to the HDMI out port, allowing a gentle arc of the cable. Just like the Ethernet cord, the weight of the cable should be fully supported by the strain relief clip. Now connect the cable to the HDMI out port. After it's connected, give the cable a gentle tug to make sure all of the weight is on the clip and not the port. Lastly, you may now connect the bottom end of the HDMI cable to your third-party replay system. If you're expecting inclement weather, you can protect the Handycam and motorized head from rain using two protective rain gear parts, the custom enclosure bag and the lens hood. First adjust the position of the Sony Handycam on its mounting plate. Then, fasten the lens hood to the plate directly in front of the camera lens using the perpendicular slot and the wing nut. Finally, pull the enclosure bag over the entire unit. There's Velcro on the back to make this easier. Close the Velcro together and then use the two drawstrings to cinch the enclosure around the lens hood and at the bottom of the camera head. This ensures that the entire unit and all its ports are fully enclosed and protected from the rain. If the tests were successful, you can now raise the end zone tower. Keep one hand in contact with the tower stages at all times. Make sure the ethernet cord is secured to the pole with a large carabiner clip that is provided. Raise one section at a time and lock it in place before moving on to the next. Once the game is over, always scroll through all replay clips and tap the blue download arrows if there are any. Be sure to scroll through all the thumbnails, checking for plays that need to be downloaded. Do this before disconnecting any equipment, so that all plays are synced 
and you don't have to set up the equipment again later to obtain missing clips. Taking a few minutes after a game to do this will save you a lot of time later on. You can share or delete games by using the Select option on the right-hand side in the Games menu. The Share option is how you'll upload a game by exporting all of its clips off the iPad and onto your computer, or to a service such as Huddle or QuickCut. Both services are discussed in more detail in separate articles with their own videos in our Help Center. To access the Help Center, go to the Troubleshooting page and scan the QR code with your smartphone. This will take you straight to our Help Center online. We highly recommend using this to solve most issues, as the Help Center can answer most troubleshooting problems and setup questions with a simple search. Before the next game, make sure to charge the network battery and both of the wireless head batteries overnight using the provided charging cords. For the latest network battery with the display screen, it's very important that you only use the 15 volt charging cord. If you use the 24 volt power cord from the router, this will damage the battery and void its warranty. Thank you for watching this instructional video and for choosing SportsCope for all of your end zone replay needs.